We're there. Excellent. All right. Um, thank you. So I'm going to talk a bit about Panassas. I want to talk about some of the issues and some of the challenges of uh, storage and writing the story to get the best out of it. Uh, Apologise in advance for some of the bits which may look like shameless marketing things, but I think it's important to maybe set the stage of where we are now, where we're going to, and why we're doing it, and what some of the tricks around it are. So, um, let's, let's have a go. So, shameless marketing slide. So, broadly, obviously, this is what we're about: we're doing hyperplane storage for all sorts of applications, and we've been doing it for many, many years. So, yeah, that, that's kind of our heart. It. It's stuff that comes out of the box and just works. Next shameless marketing slide, we'll get on to some good stuff. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so you know, it, it's important. I mean, it, uh, the values that we're offering as Panassas is really it's a ready to go solution. It's, it's a bit of kit that comes out of the box, will work very quickly, will work reliably. When it's kind of more important, you want to get on and do your job rather than fiddle around with storage. That's really what our forte is on this thing. So it's got to be, yeah, it's got to, the performance has got to be good, it's got to be reliable, it's got to be supportable, it's got to do what we expect to be able to do it. So just a reminder on the architecture for those, I'm not sure if everyone is familiar with Panassas and PanFS as the file system. It's a parallel file system. Um, we are effectively doing what would have become NFS 4.1 in, in parallel. Um, we have data storage nodes and metadata nodes as director nodes on there. Uh, on the client system, so this is pretty much any flavor of Linux available on there and some other stuff as well. Um, these will have a very small driver on there which effectively gives you access to the storage in parallel. So Metadata is providing up, uh, the clients will then access the storage nodes in parallel. So typically a file is going to be spread over multiple of these nodes. So that really gives us a parallel to scale of performance. So that's the PanFS architecture that's been going now for a number of years. So Panassas has evolved and changed. Um, historically, if you've known us then, we've had a product called Active Store, which has been built by us. We've had to do the hardware ourselves, the software ourselves, because there hasn't really been anything available on the market that allows us to put our software on uh, with the right combination of products, the right combination of enough storage, enough processing, enough networking to do the job for us. And we're, we're kind of evolving. A year or so back, we, we kind of moved the director nodes away from these shelves and put it on a, on a COT system. So the director nodes, as we call it, are really kind of the brains of the thing. They're providing the metadata, the background management to be able to take control of the storage. So the next generation, and, and you know, I wanted to be able to do this because it kind of posits where we're going and what, what the kind of challenges are with software and how we're addressing it. Is a thing called Reactive Store Ultra. This is pure COT hardware. We're getting out of the hardware business, we're going to buy in standard hardware um, to a degree, qualified hardware, and run our software on top of it. So it saves us the effort of having to design it. Point is, the hardware available now is suitable for our needs on it. So this is really our current generation, which is shipping now. Application considerations. And so there's kind of a mix of things that we're trying to do. And obviously, you now we could come out and say it's important you write software properly. Um, you're quite right to say to us, well, you should make your storage work properly. Uh, it's kind of a balance between the two. Uh, yeah, we'd like to be able to produce storage that does everything you need and you didn't have to worry about alignment. Um, we could do that at a cost, uh, and we are able to do some stuff to really help on those sort of things. Uh, as a default, out of the box, um, I think the message that NVIDIA is saying is that a lot of users just use it. It just works for most people. Uh, there is some tuning available on there, there is some tweaking, but out of the box, it's probably going to work. And this is really important for people that just want to get storage out there, does the job as advertised on the data sheet, and gets on with it, doesn't fall over, and it works for them, they can get on with their job. So we're using, we call it RAID, it's really erasure coding on there, because it's working at an object level on it. Um, large files we put on hard disks, because they work really well for streaming. Smaller files we're putting down on SSD. Metadata goes down on SSD or NVMe on some of the newer products on there. So it's really a matter of partitioning your types of data to get the best performance out of the system on it. Default rate six for resilience. You can fiddle around with this stuff. And this is where some of the options come in if you really want to kind of play around with the system. As a default, it's going to go up and run rate six and work according to the data sheet. Uh, if you'd rather just have some true scratch stuff and have a bit less uh, what's the word, resilience of the data, you can set the thing to rate five individually. You can set it on a file basis if you want to, or on a complete volume. So it gives you that flexibility on it. So a user will be given a volume, which is just an arbitrary uh, concept as a block of data. It's not capped. Now you've got the total capacity of the system. A volume is just a kind of a, a name that's assigned to a particular user or particular sets of groups. 
you can set that to a particular rate level for a particular project. Um, users can, within that, change the rate levels themselves if they want to be able to do that, if they want to be able to play to that, and they have an API that allows you to do that. There's some other tricks as well. Uh, we have a mode called concurrent write mode. Um, this is a bit esoteric, but the point is, um, if you're prepared to take a bit of control over your data, in that you're going to effectively take control over management of writing. With a challenge with any parallel system, as if you've got multiple people writing at the same time, uh, you need to be able to gate who's writing at any particular point. So, yeah, it's kind of basic stuff on there. The current write mode is a trick which allows you to write into a large file as long as you're prepared to take control across the whole environment that you know that the data is going in the right place. So it's really abdicating control from the system into the user point. And that really gives some performance boosts if you've got a system which is using huge files um, and you're just doing the odd right here and there and there. Rather than lock the entire file for everybody else, this is a mode and a trick that we can put on there to say that, yeah, okay, I'm going to take control, I'm going to allow my users to write bits of it. So it's a nice trick that's available. And that can be done on a file basis or a directory basis as well. So these are the sort of things. Um, RomIO, there's Panassas patches in there. If you're using RomIO for MPI, MPI IO, use the Panassas patches up there. Um, HDF5 is uh, a classic one for getting alignment wrong on it. Uh, performance can take a big hit if you get the alignment wrong on it. The tools are there and available to do it. So we've got hints with MPI on there to allow you to write software which will align to the strike boundaries on the system. And yeah, it'd be nice if it just did it, but you're going to get a bit more performance on there. So it's uh, <laughs> My friend of NVIDIA is saying it's kind of the top of the curve again if you really want to get the end out of the thing. Small files, always a favourite one for breaking the systems on there. Um, so you know, what we're doing and why we introduce the new products on there is we're doing some different things on it. There's a lot more cache RAM on there. Uh, we're using SSDs, we're using NVMe now for metadata on there to separate it from the file system itself. So that really improves the system. However, we're also seeing in parallel that software is changing as well. We had some issues some years back where uh, OpenFlow was causing us a challenge because it ran huge amounts of very small files. And so, yeah, putting the SSDs on there helps on it. Uh, but in parallel, the OpenFlow people have also introduced this thing called collated file format, which collates small files into larger chunks on there. So that's the sort of trick that in software, it helps us, we're kind of helping it both ways and it solves these sort of issues on it. And uh, as I mentioned previously, single large files, yeah. Lots and lots of small files, or very, very small, big files are always a challenge on it. Uh, so, yeah, cache to here and see the concurrent write mode is a trick that sometimes allows you to get past that. So how are we doing it? Traditionally, Panassas started off as just using hard disks on it. Some years ago, we introduced SSDs. The SSDs were used for small files and metadata originally on there. Uh, the point being that small files being written on a RAID stripe are pretty inefficient on it. Uh, the SSD has really improved the small file performance on it. But we've also added in the new system, the Ultra, is metadata uh, on NVMe. And rather than have it as part of the file system, it's being installed as a, a, a database. So it's, it's, it's embedded in the system on there. So it's separating the need to have your metadata and your files on the same bit of storage. So it's the, the these are kind of tricks that we can do to really help the performance of the system without insisting you change your uh, uh, code. So what's the thing look like? If anyone's seen Panassa stuff before, well, if you haven't, it's just a box of stuff. Here. But uh, essentially, this is what it looks like now. It's all using COTS hardware. Uh, these things are shipping now. Uh, these are Intel boxes. These are super micro ones. The key to it is we want to have a portable file system, and that's not to be not to say we're not going to be a software company. We're not doing software only. We are providing this kit as is. It needs to be qualified. It needs to be supportable. But it is sold as a Panassa system on this thing. So it's a higher performance system that we're using now. And this really gives us a more kind of cost-effective way of getting more performance, more capacity out of these systems, and you know, more features and more intelligence by using the NVRAM RAM and the uh, sort of the NVDIM uh, and the NVMe. So what's new? Ludicrous mode. Uh, I did ask our marketing people, do you really want to call it that in public? But yeah, they do. Um, we have our chief architects at the Tesla fan, so we got it. Um, so th this is really um, one of the bits that we're missing in terms of performance on the system was latency. So you know, back to the, the model of AI and machine learning, 
uh, be able to get low latency sets of data available to the system. Um, so it's a block diagram that several other people could probably draw the same way. We're going to have an NVMe over fabric box that sits between uh, uh, the bulk storage and the clients. The key here is we want to make it as invisible and easy to use as possible. So it's part of the Panassas environment. It's not something that has to be managed by the user. Um, really, all you need to be able to do is either treat the thing as a cache or if you've got particular data sets that you want to be working on, and the idea is in machine learning, you may have a huge raft of different sets of data there and just want to focus on a particular set of data. If you don't want to let the thing do an automatic cache on a thing, you can effectively promote the data to be available in the NVMe over fabric for high performance, low latency. And this has to be moderately invisible to the user, so as far as the user's concerned, they're going to say, yeah, I want this block of data available. We're going to move that data from the storage into the system using our director blocks here so the clients aren't involved. So it becomes a very simple, clean way of promoting data up here. And it allows us to do tricks in terms of effectively less resilience of the data here on reading because we've always got the main data behind it. But that really gives us a way of pushing the performance up on this system. And this is kind of a drop-in layer that can be added at any point into the, into the Vanessa system on there. So these things, uh, it, at the moment, it's investigation. We're looking at it. We're doing some kind of initial customer views of these things. We're going to be showing the supercomputing some kind of, uh, what's the word, uh, thought model, just to kind of talk it through with people. But it's a way of really giving us that extra layer of performance and low latency, as well as the file performance on it. And again, it's going to use cult boxes, so it, it's, it becomes a very cost-effective way of adding performance into the system. Okay, oh, unbelievable. Well, this is only going to take me two minutes or half an hour. So anyway, <laughs> show me this marketing slide at the end of it. But the keys are that we really want to be able to give you a system which just works and does the job. So we can get you, you know, doing what you want to do, doing your work, writing your applications on top of the thing without having to worry about managing storage. If you really want to tweak it to get the end out of the thing, there's some tweaks available out there. Uh, you know, talk to us about the software. We've done some modeling of uh, software that people have used to understand what the limits on there, some profiling on it, um, and really just kind of, you know, give, because we can see what's inside our system, we can quite often pick out bits which are kind of not aligned or not doing the best way possible on it. But the aim is we want to have something that does the job, does it well, simple, fast, and you know, a cost effective way that just works without having to be a pain for you. That's it. I think I'm on time on there. Any immediate questions? <laughs> Too easy. No, thank you. Thanks.